He had the whole Eastern Conference locker room talking about him. Think, Just think about that for a second. He's been in the league for a year and a half, and he has 12 NBA All-Stars telling stories about him. That, that was remarkable to me. They talked about the dream team. Jordan did insinuate he really didn't want Isaiah Thomas on the team. Thomas had beef with him, Larry Bird, and Magic Johnson. So that's why it wasn't the team. Was he robbed? Yes. I mean, Thomas beat Bird, Johnson, and Jordan in a series. Can anyone else say that? No, they can't. He should have been on that team, and Jordan's right. He's the second best point guard ever. But again, he didn't shake Jordan's hand, and Jordan can't let it go. And looking back at it, Thomas should have. Thomas was a sore loser. And I'm a Thomas guy. I'm a Detroit guy to the to the fullest. And he should have stayed, and he should have shook his hand. Then let's look at my boy Tony Kukoc. Tony Kukoc got a brutal initiation to the boys. Pippen and MJ locked him up. He got manhandled that first game. Manhandled. I mean, embarrassed. And then for him to come back in the finals and play the way he did just showed you how good he truly is and how tough he is. I mean, he was living in a war zone. Do you really think Michael Jordan and Pippen just knocking on him are going to have that big an effect on him? No. He's dealing with stuff that us in America can't even can't even fathom right now. I mean, we have some people breaking down because they have to stay in their houses all day. And this guy was living in a war zone. So we can't understand his mindset and how tough he truly is. But that was, honestly, that was nothing for him. And he handled it like it was nothing. And good for him. It showed you how good and how tough he actually was. And I'm to the point now with Michael Wilbon... I can't stand him. He's on there way too much. He's coming off like the ultimate fanboy. And then for him to be on, what was it, first take? And he's saying that Kevin Durant couldn't play basketball at that era? How can a 6'11", better version of Scottie Pippen, not be able to play basketball at that? I mean, that's insane to me. That just showed you how much of a fanboy he was and how he can't think in a rational manner. And don't get me wrong, you know, I understand ESPN and everyone else is struggling for content, but come on. To say Kevin Durant couldn't play during that era, that's absurd. That that's just totally absurd to me. But back to the last dance. Then they then they dove into the gambling stuff with Michael Jordan. Everybody gambles. That's nothing new. Did Jordan have a gambling problem? Probably. Maybe. But you know what? We really don't know. But when you look at all the charitable stuff like Kobe and LeBron have done, where's that been from MJ? Maybe if he didn't lose all that money gambling, maybe he could have that big effect with the less privilege. Or maybe MJ just doesn't want to give back. I don't know, so I really can't speak on that. But I really feel all that stuff was kind of getting overblown. And you look at players now, players now do a bunch of shady stuff. Players have always done shady stuff. And just because he was the best player at the time and probably still is the best ever that's why I got so overblown favorite line of course the Robin I'm going to Hooters I want to see some ass and tits what I wouldn't give to spend one day hanging out with Robin someone I know was telling me that they used to go to crowbar during the Rodman days and he would see Rodman there all the time at crowbar and one time he actually was dancing with Carmen Electra and he had to be separated by Rodman's bodyguards and thought he was going to get the shit kicked out of him. And I would love to have him come on and tell the story, but unfortunately he won't. Let me backtrack here real quick. When the Knicks were up 2-0, everyone thought this was the end. And then Michael led the Bulls to three straight wins. But when the series was 2-2 and Charles Smith couldn't make that layup, if he just makes one of those layups, it's over. It is over for the Bulls. They aren't coming back from that series. And what ESPN really should do is they should make a 30 for 30, the Riley effect that had on the Knicks and how they couldn't get over like that hump, but how that whole city was excited about basketball when he got there and how the Knicks haven't been able to get back to that. But those teams were good and they just couldn't get over the hump. That'd be a pretty good 30 for 30 that ESPN could dive into. Random thought for the day. Everyone knows the situation that's going on in Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers did reach out to Brett Favre to talk to him about the Packers drafting Jordan Love because he would be able to relate 
to the situation because the Packers did draft Aaron Rodgers to replace Brett Favre. Now, everyone knows that those two haven't had the best relationship. So I found it interesting that Rodgers did reach out to him. But here's my thing. After Rodgers reached out to Favre, Favre went on the Rich Eisen show and said that Rodgers is upset and that he thinks he's going to finish his, his career with another team. Now, my thought is, did Rodgers tell Favre to go on the Eisen show and say that? Or does Favre still resent Rodgers and did he do it to spite him? Something to think about, because that's a real interesting situation that's going on in Green Bay and really speaks to the locker room setting in the NFL and any pro sport. That's it for this Monday show. Thanks for tuning in. Reminder, my fantasy football rankings are up over at ETOF 21 Sports. This week, I'll be posting some breakout players I like for each position for fantasy football. Also, I made some future bets. I'll be diving into those and sharing those. And then, reminder that on June 1st, everything goes back to a premium service. If you did have a membership, your money has either been refunded or your membership has been suspended. We'll pick up then. Also, horse racing this week. We lost Oakland Park, but Monday, Tuesday, we have Will Rogers and Fonder. Wednesday, we have Tampa Bay Downs. Thursday, Gulfstream. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we'll have Tampa Bay and Gulfstream. Reminder, UFC on Saturday. All my plays will be up on the podcast I'm recording Friday, so make sure you guys check that out. If you're listening to this on the Apple Podcast, subscribe, drop a review, give me a rating, hopefully five stars. It would be appreciated. Thanks for tuning in. Be safe. Be well. And please stay away from people. I'll see you guys on Friday.